Hello. I want to talk about something that I think is uh, pretty useful for composing music or jamming with your buddies, say if you're switching rhythm lead and just jamming and you don't want to feel like you're getting lost. Uh, this is an, a pretty useful guidepost. Um, it's not important. It's not necessary. You can still have fun and make music with or without uh, knowing chord progression stuff. It, it's all subjective. Um, if you're familiar with modes, this would either be, you know, already secondary knowledge or uh, incredibly intuitive to pick up. If you're not familiar familiar with modes, simple concept. Uh, it just has stupid names. Uh, if you know the uh, major scale, the concept of mode is just you number those one through seven and then your 8 repeats the 1, and you just play the scale uh, starting, say, not from 1 to 1, but 2 to 2, and 3 to 3, 4 to 4, ad nauseum. And the idea is when you play those modes, uh, it's the same notes relative to the, the major scale, just because you have different organization uh, between the, the notes themselves, different dis physical distance between the notes, you have different degrees of tension. And that makes it sound different. Uh, but what that means is say if you're familiar with, you know, you know your your chords are one, three, and five, the triad. Uh, and you ever wondered why your minor chord is one flat, three, and five, it's because of the mode. It's because the the three in the say the Aeolian, the relative minor, is a half a step from your two instead of a whole step. Phys the physical distance between the three and the two has changed. Therefore, the three in the chord isn't the full three, the perfect third, it's, it's the flat third. Um, but taking that a step further, you can extrapolate all the, the rudimentary triads for the different modes. So if someone's wanting to play some lead that cycles through some arbitrary combination of scale degree one, four, and six, whatever. You can play the chords corresponding to them uh, when you know like the simple pattern. Just like how the major scale has the algorithm whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. It's the same type of thing when it comes to what chords go with what modes. So, and it would look something like this. I will, I'll show you in the, the, the A triad shape. So I start with the major triad, you know, with the five, one, the third. The minor shape. So this is the typical notation you would see regarding chord progressions. I've color coded the major and minor chords. And as you can see that the major chords are your one, four, and five. Your minor chords are your two, three, and six. And your seventh is a minor diminished. Now the, the trick with these chords uh, there's two ways of thinking about them. You can think about them from the relative perspective of the one, or you can think about them uh, from the perspective of the mode itself in a vacuum. If you think of it, each of these chords as uh, in a vacuum within the mode, it's the typical triad construction, one, three, and five. Uh, but it's whenever you think about them in respect to the one, do you get the, the funky, say, the minor chord in respect to the one is the one flat three five, and the minor diminished in respect to the one is the one flat three flat five. In practice, uh, what this looks like, uh, I will be using the D shape triad. Everybody should be familiar with it if you've been playing for a few months. 
And say you haven't been playing very long and you're not familiar with the D minor shape, this whole exercise is a fantastic uh, gateway into chord construction because you start to uh, understand what you're really trying to think about. So the minor shape would be the, the, the one flat three in the five. So this is your one, this is your five, this is your third. So you flat that third, and that's you hear that relative tension, and you get this minor shape. And whenever you play, uh, say, a D minor and a D major together, this you're no longer talking about relative, you're talking about parallel. So if you ever hear parallel major or minor, that's what they mean. Now, the minor diminished is it's the minor shape, so it's the, the flat third, but on top of that, you flat the five. So if this is our minor shape that we're starting with, and the note you're playing on that G string is your five, you just flat that one more time, and conveniently, it looks like this, where you're barring on that one, that fret. You get that sound. Armed with that knowledge, you just go through these chords, these shapes, the major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, minor diminished, back to the one, to the to the major, uh, following the algorithm algorithm of the major scale. If you're familiar with the major scale, you know, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. And it'll look like this. tight down there. And you're hearing it, it, you're essentially going through the scale with the chords and it all sounds like it meshes. And in fact, uh, one of the things that's not present in a lot of modern popular music is this concept of leading tone. And that whole leading tone comes from that minor diminished going back into the one, the, the sound of that kind of musical catharsis you would hear in a lot of older music. And it comes from that. It comes from understanding, you know, hypothetically what notes should be played where. Uh, the extremely powerful thing of this which is what I recommend if you're interested in, you know, other types of music, uh, maybe not straightforward rock music or whatever, you're playing indie, neo, soul, or math, is this concept is easily extended to any sort of funky chord situation you want to play with. Uh, so I particularly like to use, uh, you know, a lot of modal jazz tones, uh, major, minor, sevens, minor, six, minor, nines, whatever. Uh, so if you understand triads, you know, what we just did, you can extend this and, and that knowledge as a base, and you can just start throwing notes in everywhere. Say, I'll do the same thing. This time, I'll do it uh, using uh, A major seven shape. If you're not familiar with A major seven shape, it is the, say if you're barring that A major, and this is your root on that G string, just flat it and rearrange your fingers to get the so I'll just run through that whole practice with this major uh, major seven and use the minor seven minor seven diminished and you get beautiful sounds and that's the power of it if you watched all this, thank you. Um, I'll be trying to do more of these types of lessons, you know, cut out the fat, just what I think people need to, you know, explore different areas of guitar. Uh, if you have any ideas, let me know.